Hi, I'm Sean with SparkFun Electronics, and I've got some exciting news for you. The engineers at Intel have been hard at work making incredible advancements in microprocessor technology. Last year, Intel released the Galileo. This was an Arduino-like board that contains an x86 processor, useful for makers and educators. Today, Intel is releasing the Edison. Bum bum! Bum 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 bum. The Edison is a full computer in a tiny package. It contains an x86 32-bit dual-core Atom processor running at 500 megahertz. Onboard is also a 32-bit quark running at 100 megahertz. This works as an onboard microcontroller. The Edison contains one gigabyte of RAM, four gigabytes of eMMC, which is your non-volatile storage. It also contains a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stack with an onboard antenna and UFL connector. To power it, you need to provide 3.3 to 4.5 volts input. So no five volts unless you want bad things to happen. On the back side is a 70 pin Hirose connector with some tiny pins. 40 of those pins can be used as GPIO. And of those 40, several can be used for different interfaces. For example, there's an SD card interface. There are two UART serial ports, two I2C ports. Keep in mind that only one is really useful for external communications. There's one SPI port with two chip select pins. There's also an I2S controller for digital audio and four PWM pins. The Edison also contains one USB 2.0 on-the-go controller, so you can use it as a device or a host. The important thing to keep in mind here is that all of the GPIO pins are 1.8 volts. That means you can either use 1.8 volt logic hardware to connect to the Edison, or you need to level shift it up to 3.3 or 5 volts to use other hardware. You might be wondering what you can use the Edison for. That 500 megahertz seems a little bit slow considering your phone right now probably has over a one gigahertz processor on board. Intel intends the Edison to be used for a number of low power and battery type applications. For example, the Internet of Things. You might want to create a toaster that's connected to the internet or wearables such as a tweeting sweatband. You could if you wanted to. Unlike the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone Black, the Edison has no video output capabilities. It is, however, still a powerful embedded system, a step up from the Arduino and embed platforms. It is running full Linux on board, and in order to create a custom Linux image, you need to use the Yocto project. The plan is to be able to program the Edison using the Arduino software, or you can create custom Linux programs using C, C++, Python, Pascal, anything you wanted. In addition to the Edison, Intel is also releasing a number of add-on boards for the Edison. First up is a breakout board. This is a small board that the Edison plugs into and provides power, a console out, USB on-the-go port, and a prototyping section where the pins are connected to the Edison's GPIO. Keep in mind this is 1.8 volt logic. Next up is an Arduino board. The Edison plugs into this and it provides headers in an Arduino layout for all of your shields. It also contains a selectable 3.3 or 5 volt logic to the Arduino shields. To help you get started, we are releasing the SparkFun blocks for Intel Edison. These are stackable boards that provide specific functionality. You can connect a number of them to create a small form factor stack for your project. First, we have the Arduino Pro block. This contains an Atmega 328P on board so that your Edison can control a microcontroller over UART. The block has an Arduino Pro form factor so you can plug it into a breadboard or attach Pro Mini type shields like the Minigen or the XB Explorer. Next is the battery block. This allows you to power your Edison with a single cell LiPo battery. It also has a built-in charger. Then we have the console basic block. You can use this to power your Edison and block stack. It has a six pin header that lets you connect an FTDI board or cable to the block. This will give you a basic serial console into Linux running on the Edison. Then we have the console block. This is very much like the console basic block. However, it has a built-in FTDI chip, so you just need to provide a USB cable in order to power and talk to the Edison. Next is the base block. It is the same as the console block, but it also breaks out the USB on the go port. In one USB port, you can have a console to your computer for configuring and programming the Edison, as well as a USB or device or host on the other USB port. The GPIO block breaks out 16 GPIO lines from the Edison, as well as ground, system voltage, 1.8 volts, and 3.3 volts. The board can be plugged into a breadboard for easy prototyping. Keep in mind that the GPIO is still 1.8 volts. The H-Bridge block contains two H-Bridges that allow you to control two motors from the Edison. You will need to provide a separate power supply to run the motors. Here we have the OLED block. 
This is the same OLED as on the MicroView, and it's been put on a block for you. You get a 64 by 48 monochrome screen, two buttons, and a joystick. This is perfect for creating a pocket game system or a basic file navigator. This is the 9 off block. The ST Micro LSM9 DS0 IMU has been placed on a block for you. You have access to a 3-axis accelerometer, a 3-axis gyroscope, and a 3-axis magnetometer on one board. By default, the Edison talks to the IMU over I2C. You can also configure the Edison to use SPY to talk to the IMU. The servo block allows you to control up to 8 servos with PWM. The Edison talks to the onboard controller over I2C. Like the H-Bridge block, you will need to provide an external power supply. The ADC block adds up to four channels of analog to digital conversion for the Edison. It contains a TI-ADS-1015, which communicates over I2C to the Edison. The SD card block adds a micro SD card slot to the Edison for more storage. It uses the 4-bit SD mode for faster transfers versus SPI. The I2C breakout block performs level shifting of the I2C lines up to the system voltage, which can be between 3.3 and 4.5 volts. It also breaks out the I2C lines to be able to talk to other hardware. The Edison contains a lot of power in such a small form factor. It also contains an onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, which opens up a lot of opportunities to create some sort of connected device. What will you make with it? Stay tuned for more projects and tutorials from us at SparkFun.